Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and I recently spoke about why I'm avoiding realty income. Well, all of the REITs have jumped up a good margin as rate cut expectations have uh, risen with inflation cooling down a little bit. So I want to give my two favorite REITs, or no, the two best opportunities in terms of REITs that I see right now as rate cuts could be on the horizon. So we're making this video right here. And uh, before we get into it, I just want to say, one of them is not realty income. I'm avoiding realty income. I don't own any REITs right now. I feel I'm too young to own a REIT. But to be honest, if uh, one of these were to just get too cheap to ignore, I would pull the trigger on one of them. But it's not realty income for the reasons I discussed before. There's a reason that I'm avoiding that uh, business. There's a couple reasons. And a realty income could still perform fine. I'm not saying it can't. I'm just saying that me personally, I think these are two better REITs. So uh, these are the two best opportunities in terms of REITs, in my personal opinion. And if you want to hear what those opportunities are, uh, stick around and watch the video. But before I get into it, let's roll the intro. I have been a rich man and I have been a poor man and I choose rich every time. I make investing content and my channel is Dividend Dude. You should leave a like and subscribe if you're going to enjoy the video. A disclaimer, this is not financial advice. I am just a dividend growth investor trying to share my takes on dividend growth stocks and various other stocks. This is not financial or investment advice and always do your own due diligence before investing. We have the first REIT right here and it is Vici Properties. I'm pretty sure you guys all expected that. Vici is one I used to own in my portfolio. I sold at about like $29 a share. I sold probably... It's a little bit higher than what I sold right now. Uh, but over the past five years, this company's actually not performed too bad. Year to date, still down 7%. In the past uh, year, still down about 8%. But we could see the big jump. This is when uh, the real estate um, had a good jump. It, it was right here at uh, July, like literally just a couple days ago. Uh, because uh, CPI data came out, inflation expectations cooled, and the expectations for a rate cut increase, which would obviously, obviously help all REITs, and Vici being one of them. Vici owns some of the most iconic real estate and is not really exposed to any of the bad tenants that I talked about realty income being exposed to. And, um, uh, you know, Vici, if we take a look at their financials, immediately you're going to see a difference. Not only are their total revenues increasing, but if we scroll down on their income statement a little bit more, more we could take a look at the company's... Oh, let's go quarterly. Vici doesn't have too much data. But we could take a look at the company's... Um, AFFO per share, which is the biggest intrinsic value. I basically, it's like the free cash flow per share of a REIT, the AFFO per share, adjusted funds from operations per share. You can see it right here. And uh, VG's adjusted funds from operation quarter by quarter have grown from 46 cents all the way to trailing full month 56 cents. If we take a look at this on an annual basis, we could scroll down to adjusted funds from operations per share. There's not too much history for them. But um, we could see adjusted funds from operations per share has gone from $1.93 to $2.16. So they're still growing adjusted funds from operations at a solid rate. And this is backed by the faster dividend growth. And that's uh, about a higher, I think it has a higher yield than realty income, 5.65% dividend yield. And it has a five-year growth rate of 7.6%. So a solid dividend growth rate with a dividend growth history of five years. We could see the dividend history of this business over the past year. Um, uh, since the IPO, the company's been growing that dividend at a solid rate year over year. And we can take a look at the valuation price to AFFO at 13.4 and 13.06, which is actually about 5.5 and 16% cheaper uh, than the sector median. We can also take a look at the capital structure. All REITs are going to have a good amount of debt, and Vici is no exception as they use debt to fund growth. But that is the first REIT that I'm covering. Vici is the first REIT that I view. I still view it as a good opportunity. I view the company as being cheap, uh, you know, um, priced AFO at about 13. I don't, I, th I don't think that's expensive for Vici for a high quality REIT that you're getting. And I think it's honestly a very reasonable valuation for Vici properties. The second one that we're covering here is going to be Agree Realty. Now, I feel that Agree Realty is literally just the better realty income. It's Market cap is about one-tenth the size of realty income over the past five years. This one's down about 2% still, and it's a little bit more expensive than realty income. But I feel there's good reason for that. ADC not only has more growth left in the tank, in my opinion, but the quality of the tenants are a lot better. There's no Dollar General. There's no um, Walgreens. There's no Dollar Tree. There's no companies that I feel where the, the financials of the company is kind of lackluster. And you can literally see this guy. 
This guy, great way to diversify from real estate income, the first article you see here. But their tenants are a lot higher quality. There's a lot more growth left in the tank. And we can see this immediately at their financials. If we take a look at the company's financials, we can see their revenues growing, but that's not what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the adjusted funds from operations per share. Right here, you can see how much faster growth this is. We're actually going to compare this to royalty income right now. We're going to look at the year-over-year -year growth. You can see the percentage growth rates. And if you look at the total uh, the AFO per share on a basic rate, we could see they're growing uh, about you know 7%, 5.7%, 7%. 5, 9, 9, and, and this is completely not finished. So about 5 uh, to, to 8%, let's say, uh, uh, growth. Let's go to realty income, and let's compare that directly with realty income right now. We got a realty income adjusted funds from operations uh, per share on a basic basis. And we could see that more recently. We have 4%, 4%, 2%, and we have 2% again. So we can really see that the company's not really growing as fast. We can see uh, ADC is growing at a at least a 4% compound annual growth rate and uh, some years closer to uh, high single digits. And we can see that realty income is not putting up those same numbers. Adjusted funds for operations, look at this fast growth. 9% some years, obviously uh, using debt to fund. But when uh, rate cuts happen, ADC is going to keep growing, in my opinion, in the mid single digits rate and combo this with the dividend that ADC offers. Um, they offer a 4.71% dividend, which is not bad at all, and a five year growth rate of 6.21% outpacing inflation. So ADC has been able to grow their dividend quite consistently. We could see uh, ADC has grown their dividend over the past three years quite consistently. And this is another one that actually pays monthly dividends. So, you know, it's a great replacement for realty income with higher quality tenants, a, a faster growth rate. And I think you're going to get a lot better performance out of ADC than out of realty income. We can look at the P to AFFO. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive than realty income at 15.9 and 15.5. Um, it, it's a, it's about just, it's a little more expensive than the sector average, but I believe you have to pay up for quality. And I feel with ADC, you are getting a quality rate. You're getting a, a, a quality company we're gonna actually let's do this let's compare adc to realty income just because they're so close they both pay monthly dividends i view adc as the better business i actually haven't looked at this myself so whatever this says i'm going to be surprised by as well guys um but but let's compare directly total return basis so realty income's bigger dividend is factored in so over the past year adc has outperformed year to date adc has outperformed um in the past month probably doesn't matter too much but adc has outperformed all right so let's go three years Three years, ADC is slightly outperformed, right? Uh, five years. Five years, ADC is considerably outperformed on a total return basis. 19.3% return versus 1.4% return. Actually, let's let's throw Vici into this too. Why not? Let, let's throw Vici into this too. Oh my god, Vici's crushed these. All right, so year to date, we have ADC outperforming all of them. One year, we have um, ADC outperforming all of them. Three-year basis, we have uh, Vici outperforming all of them on a five-year basis. We have Vici outperforming all of them by a wide, wide margin. Now, on the 10-year, I feel Vici, yeah, Vici is not old enough, but so we're going to take off a uh, uh, Vici in terms of there. But even Vici IPOing in 2017 has still outperformed realty income. But we could erase Vici, and we could see that ADC being around for 10 years has wildly outperformed uh, realty income, over double the return over the past 10 years. And I feel this divergence is going to continue. It's easier for ADC to double being a $6 billion market cap REIT than for Realty Income to double. It's easier for them to continue to grow and pay out monthly dividends. And if I were to add a REIT today, it would be ADC over Realty Income. In terms of uh, ADC versus Vici, I would have to determine that. I think I might go ADC just because I feel there's more growth left in the tank for them. Even Vici is a bigger REIT. And with REITs, size matters a lot more. I don't say this with Apple or with Microsoft because size really doesn't matter. But with REITs, size directly matters to growth. Market cap directly matters to growth. So ADC, if I were to add a REIT in my portfolio, it would be ADC if you guys would like to know. And it might be in my portfolio soon if the company gets to a valuation that I really like. I think it's a fine valuation now. But, you know, in terms of is it going to outperform the S&P 500, the only one out of these that I see is ADC outperforming. Vici maybe, but I see ADC outperforming. So thank you guys for watching that video. If you did uh, enjoy, please make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.